All right, so brood X is a periodical cicada that will emerge every 17 years here. Um, however, here in central Illinois, we're not gonna see a lot of brood X. Most of brood X is out east. Um, so Ohio, Indiana, and even parts of like Washington a little bit in that area, Washington DC area. Um, but our eastern counties here in Illinois, like Vermilion and Clark and Crawford, see parts of brood X. Um, here in central Illinois, we're going to see brood 19, which will cover our area in 2024. So there actually might be some areas on the eastern part of Illinois that will see brood X, but wait until 2024 and you're gonna see all of central Illinois covered here. <laughs> yes, yes. So, but um, I think it's important to mention to folks that there's two types of cicadas. So there's actually many different species of cicadas, but there's two types. There's the periodical, and those are the ones that emerge every 13 or 17 years. Then there's an annual cicada. So here at Douglas Hart, we have annual cicadas. So we'll see them every one to two years. So you can come out here right now and probably see a cicada, and that's an annual cicada. So he's been underground for about a, about a year and is ready to emerge just like the periodical. Now what's more fascinating is the periodical cicadas. How do the, I think the two biggest questions that we get is why do they stay underground so long and how do they know when to emerge? It's still kind of fascinating, but um, they are the ones that are underground for 13 to 17 years um, here and, and all across to the kind of eastern U.S. So Midwest to the eastern, they're found all around the world except Antarctica, a little too cold for that. Um, but they're underground um, like little larvae and they're not hibernating, they're not sleeping, they're actually very active. They're tunneling, they're digging, they're feeding on the tree sap and <laughs> the juices underground. And so once that cycle is up, that 13 or 17 year, they're going to emerge. And so they're gonna crawl up the tree and they're going to split and shed their exoskeleton. And then they're an adult cicada and they're gonna be alive for maybe a month, month and a half. Um, and that's when they, you hear that loud shrieking and that, those loud noises and they're swarming everywhere, which is what people out east are experiencing right now with brood X. Um, and the sole purpose is mating. They're mating right now. The males are the ones making those calls to find a mate. Um, and so once they've successfully mated, the female will find a tree or a plant and she's gonna lay her eggs on the, she's gotta cut a little groove in the limb of a tree or a plant. Um, she's gonna lay hundreds of eggs. And once those eggs hatch, maybe about four to six weeks later, um, they're gonna crawl back down, go underground, and we won't see them for 13 to 17 years. <laughs> and the cycle continues. So it's just really kind of fascinating to think that they wanna live underground this, this long. But some scientists think that they're underground that long. It's just a survival technique, it's an adaptation. Um, look at it this way, there's, when you're underground, you're not competing with all the resources above ground that all the other wildlife are. And there's not as many predators underground. So it's just kind of, um, you know, an adaptation for survival. The other question we get is how do they know when to emerge? How, oh, 13 years is up, 17 years is up. How do we know the time is up? Um, I think this still baffles me and scientists, um, but I think a lot of us can agree that some animals have this internal clock right? So monarchs have an internal navigational clock. How do they know to migrate to Mexico or back from Mexico every year? So we think they have this internal navigational clock. With cicadas, it's an internal like molecular clock. And this is where it's like, oh, this is so amazing, so cool about these little insects, right? Um, they can detect environmental changes around them. So every year a tree, they feed on the tree, right? The roots and the juices of a tree. Um, every year when a tree blooms, it has a surge of sugars and nutrients and the cicadas can detect that. They know when the tree is blooming. So they actually can keep track of every season the tree blooms. Um, and they've been able to replicate this in scientific experiments and studies. So they believe that they can detect these changes and that's how they can keep track of their 13 or 17 year cycle. Amazing, right? So cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah.
Thank you. You're welcome.